All right, section 11.3. Today we're back to the yellow and blue and something to write with. You are gonna need a notebook this time, or at least a piece of paper. So first we're gonna start with some information about trapezoids. And they talk about the area on page 450. Sorry, not the area. The altitude of a trapezoid which of course is the perpendicular. You're supposed to remember that from the last time, that's why it's in blue, because it's still in altitude, it's still gonna have to be perpendicular. And this time it has to be perpendicular to both bases because in a trapezoid you have parallel sides or parallel bases. Um, it is yellow, however, for the formula for the area of a trapezoid. Yellow because I expect you to have it memorized. Which, by the way, I know you've used that before too. Since I saw your other book, I'm telling you, I know how far you've gone and what you've done. Um, if you look over here on the next page, on page 451, I want us to look at these particular problems so we can talk about how to do them. I'm gonna write over here and try to fit it in. If it doesn't work, I got a piece of paper handy. You are gonna to need to write on something else though because I wanna make sure you get everything written down that you need to have written down for you. It says use the trapezoid V-A-N-E, which is the big one here, to find the missing quantities. All lengths and measures are in centimeters. So they wanna have a unit attached to them. Remember that whenever they tell you something with four or more letters, they go in order. So they're talking about this particular trapezoid, which is different technically from E-V-A-N. You can name it something else. But we're still gonna be talking about the same trapezoid. So for A, they wanna know if A-N measures, that's this side, eight, and VA measures 10, and EN measures 14, find the area of vein. So in order to do that, area equals one half, base times height, sorry, base one plus base two, times the height. <clears throat> Doesn't matter what order you put it in because it's all multiplication. Ten plus fourteen are my two bases. That'll give me twenty-four times eight. Half of twenty-four is twelve. Twelve times eight is ninety-six centimeters squared. Make sure because it's area, you put that squared part on it. Hey, look down here. I'm right. Ninety-six centimeters squared. For B, it says VA equals twelve, and EV equals that's this one, 10, and ET equals six, find the area. So what they didn't tell me is they didn't tell me this whole length and they didn't tell me the height. So I have to find the height and I have to find this whole length. Well, if that side is 12, then this other part down here will have to be 12, which makes my whole length down here 18 because six plus 12 is 18. And then in order to find this side, I can use Pythagorean theorem because it's a right triangle. And it happens to be one of our Pythagorean triples, which means that this is still eight. So area equals one half, 12 plus 18, that's 30, times eight. Half of 30 is 15, 15 times eight is a big number. 120 centimeters squared. Hey, look, I'm right. For the next one, if RS is the median and SN is five, EN is 15, I'll put it on the inside this time, and VA is 11. 
we still have to find out the height and the height is going to have to be, since this is the median, that means that has to be the same as this. So that's going to be five, which makes our height 10. So we have area equals one half, what they say, 11 plus 15 times 10. Half of 26 is 13 times 10 area equals 130 centimeters squared. Hey, look, I'm right. You like how this is working out, don't you? Um, what I was really concerned about was not that you could do the formula. I'm sure you can do the formula. It's making sure you've got what you need. So we're going to have to have both bases. We're going to have to have the height. If VA equals 14, that's one base. EN equals 18, and the area is equal to that. They want you to find VT. So next time we have to use some. Uh, algebra. They told us VA, that's one of the bases, is 14 plus EN is 18 and they want to know what VT is, they want to know what the altitude is. The height is what we're looking for. Oh and they told us the area was 128. Fourteen plus eighteen is twenty thirty-two. Thirty-two times height half of thirty-two is sixteen. Divide both sides by sixteen. And the height is gonna equal whatever that is. Hey, look, it's eight. Eight centimeters, not centimeters squared. Because we're talking about length this time, not area. Same thing with this one. They were looking for the same V, oh, sorry, looking for that VA. You do the same stuff with algebra. I'm sure you understand the algebra. I don't think I need to remind you too much about algebra. You're a pretty smart girl or guy, whichever the case may be. <clears throat> But I wanted you to see that sometimes you're going to have to derive some stuff, and that's okay. It's all right. You will be fine. All right, so moving on to section 11.4. Yeah, we moved fast in this class, don't we? Talking about the area of regular polygons. I tapped my camera. It's going to move some. Um, down here at the bottom is where we get a whole heap of information. So the point is the center, a point is the center of a regular polygon if it's the center of, this, of the circle circumscribed about the polygon. So in other words, if the points of the vertex touch that circle and it's the center of that circle, then it's the center of the polygon. And a radius of a polygon joins the center to one of the vertexes. That right there. That's the radius. Now, other information that's a bit more important is talking about an apothem. An apothem is the difference, is the distance from the center of the polygon to a side at a right angle. The central angle of a regular polygon is from the vertex. So this is a central angle. And they pointed out the central angle, but I needed you to know what the apothem was. Now that we've talked about it, they're going to start using them a lot. I'm trying to keep it straight. 
<clears throat> I'm supposed to look at example three with you. That's this one. Because that's the one that uses the apothems, which is something that you haven't talked about yet. And I need you to understand how we're going to do it. They want you to find the apothem, the radius, and the area of the regular figures. Whoops, let me back up a page. Because there's some formula you need to know. The area of a regular polygon, and remember regular means that all the sides are equal, is equal to one half the apothem times the perimeter of the polygon. So you have to know at least one of the sides, how many sides there are, and the length of the apothem, which isn't as hard to find as you think it's going to be. <clears throat> so back over here, they want you to find the apothem, the radius, and the area of the regular of these regular figures. So here they only told us that it was 14 inches from one side to the other. That means that your apothem is going to be half that because you can see that this is the same distance. So A is going to equal 7. The radius we don't know. What we do know is that this is at a right angle. And since this is a square, this side must be 14, which means that this is going to be 7 and that is going to be 7. And when we have 7 and 7 on one side, that means your radius is going to have to be 7 square root of 2. Because it's a 45, 45, 90 triangle. I know this because it was 7 and 7, which means that has to be 7 square root of 2. Then they want you to find the area. Well, this area wasn't too bad because you could just do the, the regular old, uh, 14 times 14 and get the area. However, if we wanted to follow the formula, it would be that the area is equal to the apothem sorry, one half the apothem times the perimeter. Our apothem was 7. Our perimeter was 14 plus 14 plus 14 plus 14, or 56. Half of 56 is 28. 28 times 7 still gives you 196. And they called these, oh, they didn't say. They called them inches. It does say right there, inches squared. <clears throat> Back to the, if you didn't know your special right triangles, you couldn't have done this. Over here, it's the same case. They wanna know what the apothem is, the radius, and the area of the regular figure. So if the apothem is my short, is my long leg. Down here, if this is 10, that means that each of these are going to be five. And if this is five, and since this is a hexagon, has six sides, that means that each of these central angles has to be 60 degrees. So half of my 60 degrees is going to be 30 degrees which makes this one down here 60 degrees, which makes it a 30, 60, 90 triangle. So since this is five, then this is going to have to be five square roots of three. And my radius is going to have to be 10, because it's two times five. Now, that being said, we can go ahead and do our formula. We don't have another alternative here. So one half times the apothem, which was five square roots of three, times my perimeter, six times 10 is 60. 
So area is going to equal 30 times five square roots of three, because half of 60 is 30. 30 times five square roots of three, outside times outside, inside times inside, 150 square roots of three. Look at that. And I'm right again. I am so good at this job. Okay, so for one slightly more difficult, problem number two down here. The regular polygons are inscribed in circles. Find the measure of each numbered angle. This one is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight sides. It's an octagon. So in order for me to find out what one of the central angles is, because it has two adjacent vertexes, so that makes it a central angle, I'm going to say 360 degrees divided by eight, and that's going to tell me what my central angle is. So it'd be great if I had a calculator. Woo, give me a second. Oh, really? I'll be right there. I'm coming, I'm coming. 360 divided by 8 is 45. You think I'd know that? So that means that 1 is 45 degrees. Angle 2 is down here, and it's half of one of the interiors. Do you remember the formula for that? Hundred and eighty times n minus two, yes, I think so. So one hundred and eighty times eight minus two. One hundred and eighty times six is ten eighty divided by eight, because that's how many we have. So this whole angle, like angle four, is going to be, sorry, let me go ahead and finish, divided by eight is equal to 135 degrees for angle four. So angle two is half of that. Measure of angle two is equal to 67.5. The measure of angle three is also 67.5. The measure of angle six is also 67.5. Measure of angle seven is half of the 45. which is 22.5. And then the measure of angle five is going to be twice because it's got two central angles to make it up. That's going to be 90 degrees. Wanted to make sure you got reminded of this, wanted to make sure you can pick it all out yourself. It's been a while since you did stuff like this, but I'm saying you got it in you. So, all that being said, time for some classwork and some homework. Classwork on page 452. And don't worry, we're not smushing stuff together anymore in this chapter. This is the last time. Numbers. 3, 7, 11, 15, and 17, and then on page 457, numbers 1, 5, 7, 11, and 15. And then for the homework, I know that was a lot, right? I used to do 20 problems a night, I'm just telling you. Numbers 
sorry, page 452. Numbers 5, 9, 13, 19, and 21. And then on page 458, it really is 458 wins in. Numbers 3, 9, 13, and 25. Okay. I'll see you next time. Bye.